Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The United States Air Force has a variety of cargo and a fleet of aircraft responsible for their transport. They are often massive sizes in hundreds of thousands of pounds. These gigantic cargo planes are powered by enormous engines that must meet specific military aircraft engine designation. One of these military aircraft is the C-5 Galaxy, which serves as the country's largest military cargo plane in its class. This plane provides the USAF with a heavy intercontinental range strategic airlift capability capable of carrying outsized and oversized loads, including all air certifiable cargo. For decades, the C-5 has been a critical air mobility asset, allowing combat forces to be quickly deployed to any location in the world. This enormous cargo hold was 120 feet long, nearly 20 feet wide, and 13 feet tall. It's so large that it can transport a submarine. It can fly for more than 2,000 miles at full load, has a maximum takeoff weight of nearly 650,000 pounds, and has four General Electric F-138-100 turbofan engines. The C-5 Galaxy is powered by four General Electric turbofan engines, each with a thrust of 50,580 pounds. The engine's length and diameter are 4.26 meters and 2.69 meters respectively, with a dry weight of 9,860 pounds. These massive engines are typically changed by contractors but a team from the armed forces can also be trained to change the engines. With the engine weighing approximately five tons and costing millions of dollars, the maintainers must use their winches in tandem to prevent any drops. The C-5 engines are extremely reliable and rarely change across the fleet. Another important aircraft to the USAF is the C-17 Globemaster III, which is a four-engine, high-wing aircraft with a rear-loading ramp. In 
In 1980, the United States Air Force requested a larger transport that could be refueled in flight and use austere runways to fly anywhere in the world. McDonnell Douglas won the contract to build the C-17 on August 28, 1981. They came up with a design that met or exceeded all Air Force design specifications. And the massive transport could use runways at 19,000 different airfields. The C-17 fleet has been involved in numerous contingency operations, including the transport of troops and equipment, and it has been dubbed the Moose. The C-17 is also equipped with a superb engine to reverse thrust capability. When landing, the C-17's thrust reversers are generally used to deflect the airflow from the four Pratt & Whitney F-117 PW100 turbofan engines upward and forward. By reversing the thrust, the distance required to come to a stop can be reduced to around 3,000 feet or less, allowing access to smaller, more remote airstrips. The thrust reverser can propel the aircraft backward on the ground, which is useful for reversing backward on shorter airstrips, for example. The C-17's thrust reverse capability can also be activated in flight mode to enable a maximum rate descent. It can go from 30,000 feet to 5,000 feet in just two minutes, which is still far from its maximum performance. Once the thrust reversers are engaged in flight, the pilots maintain the C-17 speed by adjusting the aircraft's altitude, sometimes with a dramatic relationship between the horizon and the angle of the wing. The thrust reverser system also aids in reducing speed after touchdown, which is useful for short landings. The C-17 engine requires extensive maintenance, and the average engine change takes 48 hours with extreme expertise. Every 180 days, the C-17 is sent for a four-day homestat check, or HSC. If any damage is discovered, the engine gets returned to Pratt & Whitney for further examination. An aircraft power unit is used during the inspection when the aircraft's engine is turned off. The engines are washed in a closed loop that collects and recycles runoff water during HSC. Furthermore, a CVL maintenance platform provides technicians with continuous access to wing and engine maintenance points, as well as nose and fuselage coverage.
The C-17 maintenance platform was built with painted steel, aluminum decking, dimple deck design, and angled stairways. The platforms were designed to follow the angle of the wings, allowing all technicians complete access. The stand comes with a complete utility package that includes compressed air, lights, and power outlets. Another important aircraft of the USAF fleet is the C-130, which is driven by any of the four T-56A7B or T-56A15 engines. The power section, extension shaft assembly, and reduction gear assembly are the engine's major components. These components must be effectively maintained for the propulsion system to function properly. The power section includes a 14-stage axial flow compressor with a single entry, six combustion chambers, and a four-stage turbine. A manifold bleeds compressor air for the airplane's pneumatic systems. It's usually equipped with an anti-icing system, which prevents ice from forming in the engine's inlet air duct. In-depth maintenance is the gold standard when it comes to C-130 aircraft service life extension. It entails a thorough examination of the aircraft to determine what needs to be fixed and replaced. These could either be A, B, C, or D checks. The letters denote the level of inspection, where A is the lightest and typically conducted every 100th flight hour. D checks are the most intensive, lasting up to eight weeks. Program Depot Maintenance is part of the maintenance process, also known as PDM. In a large Air Force area, this is where the overhaul or repairs are performed, or the longer PDM takes, the older the fleet. Four-engine turboprop military transport aircraft is extremely versatile and can be used for various missions. The C-130 Hercules is primarily responsible for intra-theater airlift. In fact, it's capable of operating from rough dirt strips and is the prime transport for paradropping troops and equipment into hostile areas. The C-130 can accommodate a wide range of oversized cargo, including six-wheeled armored vehicles, as well as standard palletized cargo and military personnel, thanks to its aft loading ramp and door. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.